scared? You should be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She uh, has a now we're doing lesson two dash five. It's called algebraic mm -hmm. proof. All right. Proofs. What's that in real life? Five to. If you if you're like if I'm like I'm like yo girl your boyfriend cheating on you um, and you'd be like you got any proof? Oh, what's proof mean? If you don't know what proof is and you hand her a cheesecake, you're wrong, because that's not what she wants. What she wants is, she wants evidence proving what you said true. All right? Now, we don't use proofs a whole lot in geometry anymore, but you still got to know them because, well, they make us teach them. Okay? So, 2-5, algebraic proofs. Okay? First off, what's a proof? Well, I just told you that. That's in real life, on the streets, peace. All right? But in the math book, in the real world of math, in the real world of math, what are we talking about? We're talking about practice. No, we're not talking about practice, we're talking about proofs. A proof is an argument that uses logic, definitions, properties, and previously proven statements to show that a conclusion is true. Like I said, a proof uses things to prove something's true. Okay, but the things you use gotta be true already. Make sense? Ah. If you're trying to prove something by taking a step, okay? Goody gumdrops. If you don't know what I just said, rewind and use the official term because that's the real definition. Okay? Pretty much all this is is if you don't know these, you need to write these down because you're going to use these in the next, this section and I believe the next section too, which is whenever we get to geometric proofs. Okay? So, I'm going to say them, I'll write out the word and then I'll kind of give you an example. Okay? So listen to me. If I don't write it down, you should write it down as well. Anyways, because you'll need it. Alright? I promise. And by promise, I mean I might be telling the truth. Okay, first one, addition property of equality. So we got the addition prop. I'm going to abbreviate because I don't want to write a lot, and I don't even know if you can see this from there, um, of equality. That means that if you add something to one side of the equal sign and add to the other side, then guess what? You're not changing it. You're increasing them both by the same amount. That doesn't make any sense. Goody gumdrops, I'm about to explain it. If, here's the thing. If A equals B, all right, and then that means, by the addition property means, if I want to add something to the A side, it's still going to be equal as long as I add the same thing to the other side, okay? It means that they're the exact same thing. I'm not changing it. I'm adding the same amount. You're thinking, why the crud do I need to know this? Well, I'm about to tell you in a minute, okay? We'll do a proof in a minute, okay? Addition property of equality is that. Guess what? The subtraction property of equality is the exact same thing. Subtraction property of equality is the same thing except for if you take it away. Like if, uh, say, 7 equals 7. All right? That means that 7 equals 7. Is that true? Yes. All right? Truth. Okay? So 7 minus, like say C is 3. So if I take 3 from 7 here and 3 from 7 here, do I get the same thing? Yeah, it's four on both sides, okay? So subtraction property of equality means they're still equal as long as I subtract from both sides of the equal sign. Now, if I did all this from one side of the equal sign, like if it was over here, and I subtracted it off from over here, I'm going to screw up my problem. But if, as long as I do it once on both sides, we good, all right? Goody gum drops. Now, got two more. Multiplication and division, same things. Just replace subtraction and put multiplication property of equality, okay? If I'm going too fast for you, you can always pause it, stop it, whatever you got to do, okay? Multiplication property of equality, same thing. If A equals B, then A times B equal, I'm sorry, A times C equals B times C, okay? Multiply it on the same sides, it's fine. Guess what division? Same thing. Division property of equality, if you divide on the same side, or on the opposite sides by the same thing, it's the same thing, okay? You're not changing anything. Oh, goodness. All right? Next, now those are the four. You got addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Those are your basic things in math. You don't know what those words mean? You better ask some questions. All right, next we got reflexive property. Okay, reflexive. Let me think of the best way. Okay, say you're looking at a mirror. All right, you're looking at a mirror, you see your reflection. Or if you're looking at a lake, like a clear, beautiful lake with a swan and a dove and small children frolicking about catching crawdads. If you look at your reflection, then you're going to see yourself, correct? You see, the, you see the exact same thing reflected back at you. The reflexive property, this marker's awful. You're awful, all right? You're awful. You're awful, more awful. Reflexive 
property means that if something A is equal to A, stuff is equal to itself. Durr. All right, so if it's equal to itself, and you need to know that, it's a reflexive property. Okay? R-E-F-E. R-E-F-L-E-X-I-V-E. -E -E. Reflexive. Yes. I got third place in the spelling bee in eighth grade. Don't tell your mama. All right, next. Symmetric property. If two things are symmetric, like people are symmetric. If you like, if like a bad, mean person came in and cut me in half with a sword, I'm the same on both sides, correct? Like if you folded me, like my arm would, and everything would touch like this, okay? Because I'm symmetric. People are most of the time symmetric, okay? So symmetric means it's the same if you put it in, fold it in, it's going to be the same on both sides. Now, what that means for us is, we can switch stuff. Okay? It means for the symmetric property, I'm going to write symmetric. S Y M M E T R I C. I don't know if I spelled that right, but I did. So, hi in your face. If A equals B, then we can switch it and B would equal A. This comes in handy whenever we got something, but we want something else to go in there, we can just switch them, okay? We won't use it a whole lot, but whatever. Er, all right? Now, this one you'll use quite a bit, okay? I hope you're writing all these down, because if not, you need to work, work, rewind and let me say the same thing I said, but this time you write it down, okay? First thing. Next thing. Transitive. T-R-A-N-S-I-T-I-V-E. Transitive property, okay, of equality. All these are of equality. If you don't know that, get it right or pay the price. All right, transitive property. This is what I like to call cutting out the middle man. If A equals B, and B equals C, then guess what else we know is equal to each other? A equals C. We cut out the middle man and bring these two together. A would have to equal C. It's math, y'all, so it's right, y'all. Oh, I'm saying y'all. I guess it's because I'm from a state. Um, last one that we have to learn is the substitution property. Okay, I like said not the last one. Sorry. All right, substitution property. You know what a substitute is in sports? If, uh, like, you're one of the star players and you're like, oh, my foot hurts, coach, because you're tired and you don't want to come out because you don't want to look like a pansy, what you do is you say, I need a sub. They take you out and put someone else in. That's all you're doing with substitution property. It's like, you can't see it, so that wouldn't help. It'd be like if I took this black marker and I replaced it with this blue marker. I substituted. I didn't, if they're the same, I can do that. I can just substitute. It's called substitution property of equality. Now, one that you already have learned, but I want to go over just in case you forgot, it's called the distributive property. When you distribute stuff, like they say, um, he distributed funds, that means you give out stuff, okay? It'd be like... I'll, do any, I'll let you do an example. Three, and then we got four minus um, two x. There we go. It's called the distributive property. 99 times out of 100, you'll use it whenever there's parentheses. Okay? What you do is you distribute the three to all the stuff in there. Okay? This is like two separate things, a four and then a negative two x. What we do is it's right next to it, which means multiply. So we distribute it there and there. Rhymes with schmishribute, if you will. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times negative 2x would be negative 6x. That's called distributive. You'll need to know it. If you don't know it, write it down and we'll look, 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 look. Alright, here we go. Let's do a problem. Uh, let's do an easy one, okay? And this is how you do a proof. Okay, what I gave you was a bunch of stuff that helps prove stuff. So I'm going to do an example. We got negative 5 equals. 3n plus 1. I hope you can see this. If not, zoom in. Alright, if you can't zoom in, you can see that. Stop crying. Alright, how do we know that? Because I gave it to you. You're right, given. 99 times out of 100, the first thing you got is given, because how else you going to get it unless they give it to you? So that's given. What you do it is, I forgot to tell you all this, sorry. It's called a two-column proof. Alright, I'm going to do it because I like it. Alright? Now, this is the statement. This is what you're saying is true. So that's the statement side. Statement. This is the reason that you can do it. So this is what you're doing, and this is why you can do it. Alright? Now, that's given. I gave you all that, so it's given. That's the reason we can do that. Now, if I want to solve this, my goal is to get n by itself. 
So I gotta get rid of what's farthest away on that side of the equal sign. I gotta get rid of that one. To get rid of that one, I do the opposite. Okay? So, opposite of adding one, subtracting one from both sides. Okay? Now, what law or what, yeah, what property tells me I am allowed by law to subtract from both sides without screwing up my problem? Give you a hint, we just subtracted. Subtraction property. So we write over here, subtraction property of equality. I abbreviated, obviously, because I can do whatever I want. All right, now, subtract. So all we do is we subtract and now we bring it down. Negative five minus one, negative six. Bring down our equal sign, bring down our three and our n. You don't have to draw the arrows, I just did that for y'all's sake. And then positive one minus one, it'd be like if we had a mound of dirt that was one inch above the ground and then we cut off one inch of that, we're back to the surface, we're at zero. So that's gone. Reason we do the opposite is to get rid of that stuff. Okay, it's called multi-step equation. You don't know that. You need to know it, or else you're gonna not be able to show it. <laughs> that was stupid. All right, negative six equals three n. All we did here was we simplified. So I'm gonna write simplify. Simplify. If that's spelled wrong, it's your fault. Okay. Next, my next step to get n by itself. That's three times n. What's the opposite of times? <gasps> Divide. Divide by three on both sides. Guess what property? The division property of equality. All right, that leaves me with negative two equals n. So all we did was simplify as well. And sometimes I ask you to do that. I think it's this, this what I'm about to do. Sometimes I ask you to do this. I think it's stupid, but whatever. If they want you to switch it, what is it called when we switch it? What's it called whenever, whatever, it's symmetric property. Symmetric property of equality. And that's a proof, people. That's proof. 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 All right, there's a couple more things you need to learn, and then I'm done talking to you people for a while. All right? Okay, you know how I said equality is pretty much the same thing as congruence in the last lesson? Well, it is, okay? So... Same thing here. Congruence deals with more like angles and measurements and stuff like that, not just straight up numbers. Straight up numbers is this stuff. That's the algebra part. That's why I said algebraic proof, even though we're in chi 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 on the tree. All right. Now the three that you need to know. If you're using it for angles, they'll like this. Okay. They'll still do the reflexive property where something is equal to itself, but they'll call it the reflexive property of congruence. That's if you're talking about like line uh, AB is congruent to line AB. That's a reflexive property of congruence. Okay, you'll probably get it right if you do, if you know the reflexive part. But just so I can say I told you and I can blame it on you if you get it wrong, I'm telling you now. Next, we got the symmetric property. Same thing with angles. Okay, if you're gonna switch it, like angle one is congruent to angle two, and then you switch it and make angle two congruent to angle one, then guess what? That's called the symmetric property of congruence because you're dealing with something that's tangible. Okay, it's not just talking about numbers. You're talking about an angle or a line or something like that. Last one. Transitive property, that's the one I told you, the middleman. Transitive, that's the end of that story. All right, guess what? Good luck. Hope you all ace it.